What's going on everyone? My name is Evan Jemnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. In this video, we're going to continue going over brand new dinosaurs that have recently been discovered. Now this group of dinosaurs is especially strange and breaks a lot of the norms that we think about when it comes to dinosaurs. So let me know in the comments which of these dinosaurs you think is the most interesting. First up is Duonychus, a dinosaur that's part sloth, part bird, and completely bizarre. Duonychus lived in China 96 to 90 million years ago and measured about 10 feet long. It was a feather-covered therizinosaur, which meant it had a long neck, a small beak skull, and large hooked claws. But unlike every other Therizinosaur, it only had two claws instead of three. Its claws were no joke either. These claws were over a foot long, or 30 centimeters. Even some of the biggest predators like T-Rex, Spinosaurus, and Giganotosaurus didn't have claws that big. But despite the imposing appearance, they weren't used for combat. Now the claws of many Therizinosaurs were actually too weak to stab or slash other dinosaurs. Instead, researchers believe Duonychus used them more like a hook, pulling down branches to munch on foliage. What's also interesting is that it's not the only Therizinosaur to have lived in China during this time. It also lived alongside Sacnosaurus, Ehrlichosaurus, and Enigmasaurus. So why is this region and time period blowing up with Therizinosaurs? We might be able to get some clues by looking at the ancient environment they lived in. So the environment was a semi-arid river system filled with some of the first ever flowering and fruit trees. While we have no direct evidence of Therizinosaurs eating fruit, their long hooked claws and delicate skulls made them an ideal candidate for eating soft fruit. Many of the other dinosaurs in this environment didn't have the perfect combination of features and were likely focused on eating other types of plants. The toothless beak, the long arms, and unique hand structure of Duonychus gives us a clearer picture of how Therizinosaurs lived. Not as terrifying slashers, but as specialized herbivores with some seriously strange adaptations. Now let's head to Arch Argentina to meet one of the continent's newest dinosaurs, Chotty Titan. So Chotty Titan is a titanosaur that lived in Patagonia during the late Cretaceous, around 83 to 75 million years ago. While only partial remains were found, including leg and tail bones, what we do have points to a unique long-necked dinosaur. A chatty type was smaller than most titanosaurs in the late Cretaceous. Some species, like Argentinosaurus, could easily reach over 100 feet in length, but this dinosaur was only about 23 feet or 7 meters in length, making it one of the smallest titanosaurs, even though it's still a pretty big dinosaur. Now, chatty type is also unique in that its body shape was unlike most titanosaurs, too. Its legs were surprisingly thin for a titanosaur, since thick legs are a defining feature. It also had what's called a pronated tail, where the tail actually hooked down. Now it's not quite clear why its tail was shaped this way, but it's a feature that it shared with many other smaller titanosaurs from Patagonia. Now the reason that this dinosaur may have been so small may have been because of where it lived. After hundreds of years of digging up sauropod fossils, paleontologists have begun to realize that most sauropods get bigger in warmer and drier environments and smaller in cooler environments. This is why some of the biggest sauropods are found near the equator, but Patagonia is located near the southern tip of South America. So really, it's quite close to the South Pole. This colder climate explains why Chotty Titan was so small for a sauropod. Now this find reminds us that even today, entire corners of dinosaur history are still being uncovered. Next up, we have a brand new predator from prehistoric China, the Yanmao Raptor. This carnivorous dinosaur lived about 175 million years ago, making it one of the earliest known Metricanthosaurs, a group of meat-eating dinosaurs that were closely related to Allosaurus. Like their North American cousins, Metricanthosaurs were deadly predators. Based on other Metricanthosaurs, Yanmao Raptor probably had a bite force of just under 6,000 newtons. That's nearly five times stronger than the bite from a tiger. It's also fast. It could probably run up to about 32 to 34 miles per hour or 52 to 55 kilometers per hour based on similarly sized dinosaurs. While Yanmao Raptor could make short work of us, the herbivores in China during the Middle Jurassic period posed a serious threat to this dinosaur. The area was mostly filled with two types of herbivores. The first were the Mementisaurs, sauropods with insanely long necks that were nearly half their length. Now these types of sauropods were commonly reached up to 80 feet or 24 meters in length. Now, that size, it posed a serious threat against a lone theropod. The other were early stegosaurs. While not as big as stegosaurus, all of these species still had the deadly thag on their tails, and they all usually sported extra spikes on their shoulders. One wrong move, 
and these dinosaurs could easily take down a predator. Well, we don't know if they hunted in packs or not. Yanmal Raptor needed to be an efficient hunter just to keep itself safe. The reason Yanmal Raptor is so important is that while most Metricanthosaurs, like Sinraptor and Yang Chuanosaurus, lived around 165 million years ago, Yanmal Raptor pushes their origin back a full 10 million years. This early age makes Yanmal Raptor a game changer. It reveals that large body theropods were already diversifying in Asia during the Middle Jurassic, long before we previously thought. So in other words, Yanmal Raptor wasn't just a new predator, it was one of the first kings of Jurassic Asia. Let's talk about a dinosaur that was one of the last of its kind, Ciencia Argentina. Now discovered in Argentina, this long-necked herbivore lived about 97 million years ago during the late Cretaceous. It's about 23 feet or 7 meters long. It belonged to a group called the Rabacosaurs. These types of sauropods were pretty unique among most other sauropods thanks to their relatively strange heads. Nearly all Rabacosaurs had a boxy head and jaws filled with hundreds of pencil thin teeth. Now because of the delicate nature of these teeth and the fact that they have more horizontal posture, paleontologists think that these dinosaurs would eat soft, low-lying plants like ferns, horsetails, and club mosses. But here's where it gets interesting. Ciencia Argentina was one of the final members of this entire group. Around 90 to 100 million years ago, Earth experienced severe climate change. This global warming, known as the Cenomanian Turonian Thermal Maximum, was one of the hottest periods that dinosaurs ever lived through. While global warming is not so good for us, it was actually great for Rabacosaurs. Argentina was filled with several different species of them when it was at its hottest point, but as quickly as it warmed up, global temperatures began to fall rapidly. The colder temperatures and shifting ecosystems ended up wiping out the Rabacosaurs entirely. While Ciencia Argentina couldn't survive these changes, its extinction actually they paved the way for other sauropods like titanosaurs to take over South America's ecosystem. So while this dinosaur might not be the most famous, it represents a turning point in evolutionary history. The fall of one dynasty of giants and the rise of another. Now Ciencia Argentina reminds us that even the mightiest of lineages can fall when the world changes all around them. Now meet our next newly discovered dinosaur, Obelagnathus, a dinosaur that was an absolute unit when it came to chewing power. Now this plant-eating dinosaur was roughly about 13 feet or 7 meters long. It lived in what is now France 70 million years ago. But back in the late Cretaceous, Europe was more like a chain of islands. The temperatures were way higher than today, which meant that sea level was much higher as well. As a result, much of the European mainland was split apart by seaways to produce a tropical archipelago system. But what makes Obelignathus really special isn't just where it lived, it's how it ate. This dinosaur is more closely related to ornithopods like Tenontosaurus and Zalmoxis. But unlike its close relatives, Obelignathus had massive jaw bones used to chew up its food. Now jaws this thick aren't unusual for dinosaurs. Ceratopsians and Hadrosaurs all had thick jaws that helped them efficiently chew up their food. But the ornithopods that Obelignathus was related to aren't known for chewing their food that much. So why the oversized jaws? Well, paleontologists think it might have to do with living on an island ecosystem. Because island populations are cut off from the mainland, and have very limited resources or exotic resources, they have to evolve to survive off of those resources. In this case, Obelignathus may have evolved those big jaws to experiment with new foods, chewing in ways and on things its ancestors never did. It's unknown what exactly it ate, but France in the late Cretaceous was filled with relatively new flowering plants and trees. The area featured palm trees, willow trees, and the relatives to chestnut and oak trees. The leaves, fruits, or tough seeds and nuts from these trees may have been what Obelignathus ate. The authors didn't conduct any bite force analyses, but they did predict that they should find unique wear patterns on its teeth. So it sounds like more research will be coming soon on the diet of Obelignathus. By the way, if you're obsessed with dinosaurs as much as I am, you're going to want to hear this. This shirt I'm wearing is part of an exclusive Daily Dino merch line. Most dino gear looks blank, but I designed this collection to show off your passion for dinosaurs. But don't take my word for it. Hundreds of people have already bought these shirts, hoodies, and sticker packs, and they absolutely love them. I just restocked the most popular designs, like this one, but they move fast. So tap the link in the description.
description to grab yours today before your favorite one goes extinct. All right, let's go over our last dinosaur, which was one of the oldest meat-eating dinosaurs ever discovered, Malariraptor. This nearly 10-foot or 3-meter-long predator lived in what is now India 220 million years ago. Not only is this the oldest Indian dinosaur and one of the oldest meat-eating dinosaurs, it also may have been one of the first dinosaurs in India to be at the top of the food chain. Malariraptor is a very ancient type of dinosaur known as a Herrerasaur. These types of dinosaurs are so old and so closely related to other early dinosaurs that it's hard to tell exactly where they fall in the dinosaur family tree. Based on the research conducted on Malariraptor, the authors think that these ancient dinosaurs were actually older than both the meat-eating theropods and the long-necked sauropods. During the late Triassic, dinosaurs were actually not the dominant animals. They had to compete with many other prehistoric reptiles that were bigger and faster than them. However, the tables started to turn after the Carnian Polluvial episode, which is where Earth experienced global monsoons for over a million years straight. After these global monsoons, we see dinosaurs start to get bigger, faster, and more deadly. The southern half of Pangaea in particular saw a biodiversity boom in dinosaurs, which is where modern day India was located. Located. Here, older prehistoric reptiles began to go extinct as dinosaurs began to outcompete them as predators. And it's no wonder why. Malariraptor would have been quite fierce even by today's standards. This dinosaur would have been able to reach speeds up to 33 miles per hour or 54 kilometers per hour. And once it caught its prey, it would have been able to deliver a bite force of about 400 newtons. Dinosaurs like Malariraptor were game changers and set up the foundation for the reign of dinosaurs way back in the Triassic. Before you go, I want to give a Massive thank you to the small army who makes these videos possible, my daily Dino Direct members. This isn't just another Patreon, it's a front row seat to cutting edge science of paleontology. Members get early access to these videos, exclusive presentations from me and other top paleontologists, and a private community where I answer your questions and share dino discoveries directly with you. If you want to go beyond the surface level and become a real dinosaur insider, then head to the link in the description and join us now. And heads up, new masterclasses drop every month, so it's a perfect time to jump in. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video discussing the newest dinosaurs. Till next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, Daily Dino Guy.